Okay, I'm gonna hit other side. Are you muted? Is the mic muted? No. All right, I see we have Ann Schwamm, Kevin Gallatin, uh, Matt, Steve, Tom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give it a few minutes for everyone to join. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we still have a few more people joining us, so we'll, we'll give it a few minutes here for them to come in. Um, as a quick introduction, my name is Doug Holbert with Integrated IT Group, and I'll be your host today. Um, we're hosting a webinar. Uh, confidential information needs more than just a firewall. Uh, I'm joined today by a Sophos representative, Scott Roberts. Uh, Scott will be sharing what more organizations should be doing to secure their data. Uh, it's, a, it's a rather wide sweeping uh, presentation. Um, so by all means, you know, we welcome any and all questions that you guys may have. Uh, before we begin, we need to take care of a few housekeeping items. If you're unable to hear us or see the intro on your screen, please take some time right now and let us know through the chat. Uh, just send us a message or, or a notification and, and we'll get that handled for you. Um, we will also ask in and during the chat or in and during the presentation in case someone's having trouble with the audio uh, along the way. So uh, give us just a few seconds here. We'll let the last few um, attendees get set up and, and join with us, and we'll be back in touch here in a sec. Great, thank you. Uh, we also want today to be as interactive as possible, so please be sure to ask any questions. Um, the, the more questions you guys ask uh, and, and inquiries that we get, the better that we can tailor all the future content for you and your organizations. Uh, that's ultimately our goal, is to educate and, and help everybody understand the things that, that we work in our, in our, you know, in every day. So uh, you can ask them whenever throughout the presentation. Um, we have a few moderators that are uh, reviewing the chat and they'll let us know when the questions come in. We'll address those uh, as we can during the presentation. If we can't get to them during it, um, we will definitely follow up with you afterwards. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, stick around if you need to afterwards um, and, and let us know, you know, hit us up in the chat. Let us know if, if we passed over something or if you'd like to connect and we can set up a meeting there. Uh, now to get you to, to help get you acquainted with us, uh, we'd like to provide a quick background on our respective organizations before diving into the topic. Uh, as I previously stated, I'm Douglas Holbert with Integrated IT Group. Um, we are a 
a managed service provider uh, and um, IT consulting firm in Twinsburg, Ohio, founded in 2010. We have about 25 employees. Uh, our core management team has 25 plus years of experience and we provide IT expertise throughout the Northeast Ohio and surrounding areas. Um, we actually go into the surrounding states as well as needed. Um, and we have reached throughout the nation uh, through some affiliate um, partnerships that we have. Uh, we partner with leaders in our industry and that is to bring the best technologies and services to our clients. Um, we, we take that very seriously and we make sure that we do our due diligence um, to ensure that we're bringing you know, best of breed to our customers. Um, that just lends to the relationship and ensures that everybody is, is getting the best uh, security solutions as, as it pertains in this uh, presentation, but also all the other technology solutions that we offer. Uh, we service small, medium, and large size organizations. There's really no uh, cutoff there. Uh, we have ways to scale uh, as needed and in, in pretty much all verticals, uh, healthcare, education, business, it's, it's all around. So um, we, we bring our staff in from all different areas. Um, we have some that have come from education, some from other businesses, and then some that we've, you know, coached and trained up from the ground up so that we can tailor our, our people to the needs of our customers. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to pass it off to Scott Roberts with Sophos. Yeah, afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for have us, having us. You know, we're uh, thankful for partners like Integrated IT that, you know, uh, really are our, our, our voice and our feet on the ground that give us an opportunity to, you know, just, uh, you know, pre-present the solutions that we're building in the background for you guys. So anyway, a little bit of a history of Sophos, just for those of you guys who don't know, we've been uh, playing in this game for a long time. Sophos is a uh, based out of Abington, UK, with offices geographically located, you know, just, uh, you know, across the world. So from a U.S. perspective, we have a very strong presence in the Boston area, Burlington area. And, you know, obviously everybody in this space has to have an op office out in, you know, the San Francisco area somewhere. So we've got our little uh, Silicon Valley office out there as well. You know, we've got offices in Vancouver, the Philippines, Germany, obviously the UK again, and just again throughout the world. So we've been, we've been playing in this space for a long time. So, you know, just a couple of quick proverbial slides here. You know, we've, like I said, we've done this a lot. We've got clients from everything from very, very small mom and pop all the way up to some of the largest name brand organizations out there. So after 35 years, you kind of have a tendency to touch a lot of things. So today's topic predominantly is going to be kind of getting into just some of the complexities of the IT landscape that we're all dealing with and how we can better try to simplify those tool sets. And, you know, but, but we'll, while still getting that whole best of breed idea. So I use this slide a lot. You know, it kind of paints a decent picture on just everything that's on the mind of your, your typical IT guy anymore, especially somebody who has any type of emphasis on security. Just a lot of moving parts in, you know, the day-to-day -day dashboards that we're all kind of responsible for babysitting. And, you know, fundamentally, you know, it just, it gets a little overwhelming. So kind of another iteration of this slide is basically this. You know, this is just the reality of what we deal with every single day, trying to keep everything checked and balanced with all of the different moving parts that we're responsible for. And in reality, that doesn't always have a lot to do with anything operational that is driving our organizations, you know, to be better, faster, stronger, any level of profitability built into that. So fundamentally, you know, as Sophos kind of looks at it, it's kind of time for a new approach. So our goal here is to take what used to be a lot of point solutions and to now turn that into something that is sharing so much more of that telemetry data for you, where we are able to take, you know, your endpoint, your firewall, maybe your email filter, even as far out as your, your access points directly and turn them into more of a holistic security solution where we're sharing so much more of that, relatable intel between, again, what used to be individual point solutions. So the goal is really to 
kind of simplify what we're looking at. So old school methodologies, you know, we had, again, those individual point solutions, we're translating into what Sophos classifies as synchronized security, where we're taking those tool sets and basically making them all talk to each other. So what does that start to provide for you? Well, hopefully a lot more easy to understand Intel, where you're able to see, you know, that those threats and that health and that security information shared between, let's say, your firewall and your endpoint at a foundational level, and then scaling it to the point where we're responding as a system, not just necessarily a product, where we're able to dynamically operate more on your behalf to start solving problems. So our firewall is going to tell our endpoint, hey, you know, something out there is having a really bad day, so we're going to initiate a response for you. That way, you know, we're able to provide, you know, that, that, that stop sign for whatever's happening inside the environment without you necessarily even being aware of it. Where in reality, I mean, that's just kind of the threat landscape we're seeing anymore is so much of everything is just happening behind the curtain where before, by the time you ever know it's happening, you know, the problem's already well metastasized inside your organization. So new insights is kind of the goal. How do we see everything without you actually having to touch and hold every little step of everything along the way? So a couple of examples here of what that kind of looks like. So zero touch threat, isolation, and cleanup. So fundamentally what you have from a new generation solution is you have a relationship between what's running on your clients, your endpoints, and your firewall as well. So malware gets detonated in your environment. So immediately, you know, that endpoint, because it has a relationship with the firewall, that communication has been established. We see that happening. So we can start to initiate cool things like device isolation, both from the firewall back to the endpoint, so we're stopping that segmented oriented traffic, or even from endpoint to endpoint that may exist on the same broadcast domain. So we're not necessarily having to push that traffic through a firewall from a traditional network segmentation perspective our endpoints can tell each other. It's like, hey, Billy over there is having a really bad day. So let's shut him down for whatever reason. It makes it really, really easy to see that. And then taking it further into that cleanup stage. So we've stopped that network movement, that traffic from moving across your network. We've initiated that cleanup procedure dynamically solving that problem. And then again, flipping it back around where we're restoring access for you. So hopefully, and often is the case, you never had to do anything to solve this problem. So what does that start to look like? So okay, now what was traditionally a fairly long process, once you've identified what was going on, to a very dynamic process where we've identified that threat, we've stopped that network access, you, we've cleaned up the threat, we've restored access, all in a very, very short amount of time. So as that goes further, again, that synchronized security model that we have with what was, again, once point solutions, you know, talking about mailbox detection. So when you bring in maybe your email filtering component into this equation, you know, the story is very, very similar. So a mailbox gets compromised for whatever reason. That communication is established. Those components can talk to each other. So now even our email solution talking through Sophos Central can initiate an endpoint scan. So again, what was once point solutions are now operating more as a team. So again, that endpoint gets cleaned up, that mailbox gets restored. So what all this kind of translates into is, you know, kind of that zero touch lateral movement prevention. The idea is, you know, fundamentally it's like threats detected, communication happens, whatever that infection, wherever that origin point was in the environment, it's been identified, it's been an isolated, lateral movement prevented, and then that infection gets cleaned up. So bang, so now we're back to a healthy state. So I mean, it kind of reiterates that point where regardless of the entry point inside of your ecosystem, whether it's coming from an endpoint, 
whether it's coming in through email, whether it was a firewall gateway oriented threat, or even as far as with our wireless access points, a wireless access point is aware of that endpoint client and can say, hey, you know, that endpoint's in a red state for whatever reason, we're not even going to allow them network access even from that perspective. So it's very, very holistic. So not only we're just, the idea we're not just solving that basic endpoint protection problem, but we're using that endpoint as a core agent to really prevent any type of access inside your environment in a lot of different ways. So a good example from a NAC perspective would be, you know, I get a lot of questions. It's like, well, how can you guys, you know, prevent rogue actors or third party entities from accessing data inside my environment? Well, it's very, very easy. If you're not running the Sophos endpoint, our firewall says, hey, we don't see it, so you're not allowed to traverse that gateway. So I'm never gonna see your data center because you're not running our endpoint at a very basic level. It gets a lot deeper than that, but you know, from a very basic NAC perspective, that really does simplify even some of the most complex tasks. So the goal, taking what was once complicated tasks and significantly simplifying the whole idea behind there. Basically building a better mousetrap, a better tool that's very much saving you guys a lot of time. You know, not asking you to be a security expert necessarily, but yet providing you a tool that is gonna give you more of that, that sense of freedom. You know, over a weekend, something's happening in your environment, you have that security in place where those tools are acting upon your behalf. And kind of the core behind a lot of this technology is a product that we have called IntercepteX. And the advanced version of IntercepteX is what they call EDR, which stands for Endpoint Detection and Response. The idea behind the Endpoint Detection and Response is to turn what was, again, just a basic point solution into something that now becomes actionable in your environment, providing you significantly more intel on the origin, the destination, anything that happened with that lateral movement inside your ecosystem without you necessarily having to be an expert on trying to figure that out. And I get into some examples here very shortly. But you know, from a little third party validation perspective, you know, throw that slide out there. Again, we've been doing this a long time and the industry thinks we're doing a fairly healthy job of it, so. So just to add one thing into there, um, the, the, actually to summarize the last couple of slides, um, you know, traditionally, the, you know, I've been an, uh, an IT consultant, an engineer, network administrator for, you know, since I graduated high school, basically in college. Um, you know, we were always chasing our tails because, you know, antivirus would do a really good job. Some of them would do a really good job at pointing out, you know, hey, here's, here's something going on over here, but it pops up at the end user level. The end user just, you know, shrugs their shoulders or, you know, do what most end users do and just click right through it. Uh, the other ones would do a great job at stopping it, but not letting you know what it just stopped. So then you're stuck with an application that's faulting, uh, you know, something that's get that gets chewed up by antivirus. Um, so we had to chase around quite a bit where these things were coming from, uh, you know, how they got into where they were. So we had to, you know, look at the antivirus. We had to go in and look at the firewall. We had to look at server logs. We had to look at the file server. We had to look at application servers just to try and track all these things down. Um, this solution does all of that for you. It, it sees where it's coming from because it's an end-to-end -end solution. So from the edge of your environment all the way through to the endpoint, including everything else in the middle. I mean, you got email, wireless, um, um, applications, it, it, everything in between. It, it's watching all of that and it analyzes that for you and tells you exactly where it's from and stops it. Um, you have the opportunity to go in there and, and obviously tell it, you know, if it's, if it is a false positive, but, that cuts down on remediation, um, let alone, you know, catching it in the first place and stopping it from, from being a much bigger problem. So yeah, it, this has definitely changed the way that, that IT works in general, for sure. Thank you. So digging a little bit more into EDR, you know, we just started to touch a little bit on what that product set is and what differentiates it from traditional IT. So just a Quick little short video.
Can you guys not hear the video? No sound for the video. Okay. All right. I apologize, guys. Bear with us a second. We'll figure out what that's all about. Just kind of came out of nowhere. No, still no sound. We we gotta have audio block somewhere. That's not mine. Okay. All right. Anyway, guys, I apologize. I'm not sure what exactly happened to the audio on our video, but you know, we'll work around that. So digging in a little bit deeper of what that was, let me uh, restart my slide show here. Hi, I'm Doug from the product team here at Sophos. And today we're going to be taking a look at our can you hear that? Intercept X Advanced with EDR product. Let's jump right into a threat case here. As you can see up top, Hi, I'm Doug from the product team here at Sophos, and today we're going to be taking a look at our Intercept X Advanced with EDR product. Jump right into a threat case here. As you can see up top, we have a nice high level overview of the attack sequence, a summary of what happened, and suggested next steps. We're being guided to investigate a file with an uncertain reputation and isolate the machine. So let's start by isolating the machine real quick prevent lateral movement and data exfiltration. We'll then scroll down to our root cause analysis visual here. This shows us that the attack came in via Outlook, opened a web browser, downloaded something called Dropper, which then executed a file called Bad Thing. Now we know Bad Thing is malicious thanks to the red icon here. The dropper we're not so sure about. This is the file of uncertain reputation that we are advised to investigate in the next steps panel. 
Well, all we need to do is click on dropper and we'll get some initial details about the file. Since we're not quite sure if this is malicious or not, we can submit the file sample to Sophos Labs by clicking the Request Threat Intelligence button here. We'll get some additional details about the file itself, but this feature will also leverage the work of our data science team and our deep learning technology to deeply analyze the file and put the results into context, making them accessible to admins of all skill levels. As we can see here, this file is now looking more suspicious based on its attributes and similarity to other known bad files. Now, as an admin, we don't need to know what an unknown packer is, but we get the context that the majority of them are associated with known bad files. Taking a look at the code similarity, we see that the file that Dropper is most similar to is also a known bad file and that it's a 99% match. This is based on using our machine learning technology to compare Dropper to more than 250 file attributes across more than 100 million samples. So at this point, we're pretty convinced that this is a malicious file, so we can just go ahead and click the clean and block button, which would remove it from all the machines across our entire estate and blacklist it to avoid future infection. But let's first take a look to see if it's actually made its way to other machines in our organization by clicking the search for item button. Sure enough, it's on this other machine here as well. With a couple clicks, we can generate a threat case for this other machine, which we'll examine to figure out how the lateral movement occurred. So the beginning part of this attack looks familiar. I'll look to Chrome, which downloaded Dropper and some other files. However, in this case, we can see that nothing actually executed. Again, we can take a closer look at the Dropper file, but we're now convinced that it's a malicious file, so we can go ahead and clean it up from all affected endpoints in our estate and block it so it doesn't cause any harm moving forward. So that's a threat case that was automatically generated by Sophos, but we've also got some powerful tools for manual investigation as well. Let's say an end user calls up the help desk and reports that his machine is just kind of acting a little bit funny. Well, the admin can navigate to the computer in Sophos Central and under the status tab, use this create forensic snapshot link. This will take all the data that's been recorded on the endpoint at that moment and save it to a SQL compatible format that the admin can use to do some in-depth interactive threat hunting. So you can see all the data here and we'll provide documentation in a cookbook of available recipes to use. This one, for example, basically says, show me all running processes on this endpoint that have an unknown reputation that is less than 70. So we can see we've got one questionable process here called CryptMiner. Either this user is proactively mining cryptocurrency on his work machine or he's been crypto jacked. Well, we can copy the SHA here and back in central, we can search for it or the CryptMiner executable or maybe the IP address associated with it. And we find that this has made its way to several machines in our estate. If we look at the details of this machine here, we have the option to clean and block it, again, across our entire estate. We can generate a threat case. We can request a threat intelligence report, all in a couple clicks. Yeah, pretty cool, guys, huh? So the idea there, as I was trying to explain in you know, the video we couldn't get audio out of, was kind of that differentiator between what it was is historically you know just basic endpoint where you've got that AV that anti malware and you know that's solving those problems but you never really know where things are coming from or where they're going or how it may be impacting your environment and certainly not really assisting in any enhancement to your security posture so today's generation tool provides you significantly more capabilities in you know that secondary regard so now it does become an action-oriented tool without you having to add really any expertise and definitely not headcount. The tool is oriented around, you know, just really even your help desk people having the ability to witch hunt out those incidents and really becoming that expert, you know, that whole expert in a box kind of thing that we're trying to provide. So you don't have that need for that security analyst or that malware analyst or that threat intel analyst, which again, these terminologies were explained in that previous video. But these are, these are roles that larger organizations traditionally have. You know, it's fairly common in a larger organization to have these type of skill sets. And it's a, but you know, SMB and even large commercial, you 
There's just no need for it. But the reality is with today's threat landscape, you do have a need for it. You do need to have somebody or some capability or some solution that has the ability to do this witch hunting and that Intel recon for you. So the end game of the idea is to fundamentally be able to answer those tough questions. You know, where did it come from? Where did it go? Is there anything else I need to be aware of? How do I prioritize these events so that I can enhance my security posture going forward? Maybe I need to do some evaluation of my firewall rules. Maybe there's something going on with email that I thought was fairly well locked up, but obviously maybe not so much. So that's the idea behind it. And of course, the end game with Sophos's tagline, you know, prevention is always going to be our primary goal. So we want to be able to provide you this after action report and, you know, security posture, you know, capabilities, but first and foremost, making sure, you know, whatever detonated inside your environment, you know, was stopped first and foremost. So the whole guided incident response idea is very, very simple. So something does happen inside your ecosystem. Very, very easy to identify what it was. We can see how it distributes around our ecosystem, where it came from, where it went, any potential immediate fallout that you may need to investigate. You know, what was this file? How does it compare to what else is out there in the ecosystem? Okay, let's grab more intel on it to see how all of the third parties and the threat research labs, you know, Sophos and the other third parties and virus bulletin or whatever, what are they reporting on this and how does it compare? Even getting down into the real deep nuts and bolts from a deep learning analytics perspective on how this file compares into the wild. And then most importantly, what do you want to do about it? Let's crush this thing. Let's initiate a cleaning block again across your entire landscape. This isn't something you would have to do at each individual endpoint, and any endpoint that doesn't have the malware would automatically have, you know, let's, let's call them the rejection signatures or whatever associated with making sure whatever this is is blocked immediately in their environment. So there's a couple of components that are uh, brand new. So what's happening with the product is how this all fits into the different exploitable areas inside what we consider that what we call that threat life cycle. So where do you catch stuff in your environment? There's different areas where different things are attempting to run inside your organization. You know, where in that chain of the event is it actually happening? So with intercept acts, you're going to see that we're staring very much on top of that entire threat life cycle. So regardless of where something may detonate or insert itself into your environment, we're monitoring all of those different behaviors that would be specific to that specific area and employing technology design to, you know, stop that process right then and there. That, that's a significant amount of resources and, and skill set and brain power if we were to do this human way. Yeah, it's just, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's just not. So, and this is where you're hearing so much about artificial intelligence being employed into these types of solutions. The understanding of how to build malware engines based on artificial intelligence is fairly well understood at this point. The healthiness comes from the amount of data that you're able to feed it. And Sophos, having done this for about 35 years at this point, we got our heads pretty well around, you know, just uh, you know, what, what good intel would be. You know, we've got just an absolute massive amount of data that we were initially used to feed this engine. And on average, every day, SOFO sees somewhere between 400, 600,000 unique samples on a daily basis. That's every day. All of that intel is being used to continue to refine that engine, you know, as we, uh, as the product continues to evolve. So the goal is stopping as much as we possibly can, you know, making a decision based on behavior on whether or not something's good or bad, or worth, whether something good has now turned bad. A lot of examples of what that would be, you know, rogue code inserting itself into good code and now something that may be allowed inside your ecosystem is now attempting to do things that it probably never should have. That's the behavior we're watching because that's what we're seeing 
out in the wild anymore. So how effective is the tool? So using an example, megacortex. Megacortex would be the latest and greatest malware that is just kind of dropped very recently. I'm sure a number of you guys have heard, heard about it. It's about a week old. Well, not necessarily be about a week old, but it's been in the news pretty much about the past week. But just kind of an example of how we would interoperate with that. Hi, I'm Doug from the product team here at Sophos, and today we're taking a look at how Sophos Intercept X Advanced Endpoint Protection stacks up against the Mega Cortex attack. So we've got an endpoint here with all the protections turned on, and let's see what happens when we try to initiate the attack. This file here is actually just a renamed copy of Microsoft's own PS Exec tool, which is what the attackers use to execute the batch script remotely. As you can see here, we block this by default, but most customers authorize PS Exec globally, so we leave them at risk for abuse. Just a reminder to not authorize PS Exec if you don't need to use it. That's been blocked, but let's try to copy these other two files to the temp folder directly from the machine since we're sitting right in front of it. Both are detected and blocked without even getting a chance to execute, and both are cleaned up automatically. Now we're going to go in and turn all our protections off except ransomware detection and tamper protection. As you can see, we're now able to copy these two files into the temp directory. And let's run the batch script that sets the ransomware attack in motion. This part attempts to kill processes and services for various security vendors' products, including Sophos. It also kills things like SQL and Exchange so that it's able to interpret the pieces and exchange servers for ransom. And right at the end here, it executes the other file we copied over and decrypts an embedded DLL file that's leveraged by run DLL32.exe to do the encrypting. Our ransomware protection recognizes this behavior as malicious and as you can see here, stops it. So that will be automatically cleaned up as well. And against our better judgment, let's go back into the settings menu here and turn ransomware detection off. Obviously, we don't recommend this. Don't try this at home. At this point, we'll see the attack carried out as it would be an unprotected or underprotected endpoint. These files are encrypted. Here's the ransom note. That's the attack if you're not properly protected. So some of that was kind of an example of that layered defense. The idea where we're sitting all along the threat cycle is obviously we're going to try to catch this as early as possible. So, but depending on how it's inserted inside your ecosystem, some things that may be allowed, some things that may not be, that's how we're stopping it. So security, as you guys have all heard, is very much a layered defense idea. And, you know, we're trying to build that product out that is first and foremost prevention oriented, but yet deployed in a simplistic way. And now with the whole EDR capabilities, providing you a tool that gives you significantly more landscape value. So now that tool that's just designed to be, you know, that AV or anti-malware is now something that provides you a lot more recon capability inside your environment. So, and I'll uh, turn it back over to Doug here for questions. Yeah, so to, to recap, hopefully everyone got a little bit from that, at least a little bit. Uh, anything that you didn't catch, uh, obviously let us know. Either hit us up in the chat, you have our contact information, just reply back to it. Um, you know, to, to recap, you know, there's traditionally the AV, firewall, everything was all separate. It didn't talk to each other, so you didn't have that, that information. You know, it was just data and people had to chase it around. It took a long time for remediation to catch those things. And, you know, it was just, it, it was painful. Um, with Intercept X, you know, it, it's, it's happening it's more automated. So then what do you do with the automated responses and, and all of that information that you now have, you know, do you, do you employ, you know, 10 security guys to go out there and handle all that? Well, that's, that's where the automated response and the zero touch comes in. It catches those things. It fixes it for you. Um, if it does, you know, detect that it's a, that it's a threat, um, you know, the, the crypto viruses and all that, it, it will catch those, it caches those files, it will restore good copies of those files and everything is, is back to normal. Um, it will also isolate, you know, infected machines that it can't do anything with. So truly it does reduce the amount of overhead that it takes to employ the, the right level of security, which I know, you know, from experience when we're talking to, you know, the, the small and medium businesses in, in the area, um, 
one of their, you know, part of the hesitation is, well, it, it just, it, it just costs too much. You know, it's too much time, too much effort. You know, we, we, we just simply can't afford it. Well, th this is that solution where you're getting a whole lot of functionality, a whole lot more security for it, it, it's a, it's a end to end turnkey solution. Um, you know, once it's deployed, we, we've seen, we're able to analyze the information. We use it ourselves, you know, so but when these, when these, Deployments get get pushed out. <clears throat> um, we we can you know have the IT guys on the inside uh, take a look at the information and handle it as they need. Um, but then with the with the um, the cloud management, uh, we can also monitor those and pull all that into our systems as well and automate some responses on our part. Uh, you know even if it's not hands-on response, at least a response to you to let you know that hey we saw it, we know what's going on, and it's resolved. You get a thumbs up. Uh, so I mean, I mean, end to end, and and doesn't really matter, you know, what what the interaction or engagement is with us. We there's there, there's a way to make it all happen. So um, we finished up just a little bit early. We're at we're at two fourteen here, two fifteen. Uh, we had scheduled until two thirty. Um, did you have something else? Yeah, I see a couple of questions coming in. So I guess first, I mean, we did have a question regarding. Well, there was kind of a you know, public uh, event yesterday where a number of AV companies, you know, it had been uh, reported that, you know, their source code had been breached. And, you know, the question was, so was one of those companies. No, no, we were not. I mean, you guys can do your own due diligence. You can see out there who potentially was, but that's, uh, that's something Sophos recognizes. I mean, we're a big target in this industry. We are uh, highly compartmentalized you know, inside of our organization as far as, you know, what can touch what and, you know, what type of outside equipment can even get anywhere near that. So, I mean, knock on wood, you know, I don't really suspect that's a problem for where we're at, but being a little long-winded, no, you know, we were not one of those companies. Uh, there's another question here. How does BYOD get supported? Is it supported or allowed? Sophos's product landscape is actually fairly broad. So from a BYOD perspective, you guys kind of have to define what you want to do with that. So with the Sophos Central core dashboard, and for those of you who don't know what that is, Sophos Central is our hosted platform that hosts all of our current generation products. Not only is that the AV product that we're talking about today, but it's also full MDM, UEM product as well. So as we see, oh, just kind of, you know, the, uh, the traditional desktop and that whole next generation BYOD, iPads, iPhones, whatever, Android, you know, people's personal Macs, all that stuff kind of meld in you know, we have different protection methodologies, to, you know, to, to provide you a platform where you can kind of build that out how you want to, whether that's a company owned asset, a personally owned asset, a company owned laptop, a personal laptop. We've got a lot of different ways to help you solve those problems. Okay, great. I, I think we, we have a few other questions that we'll probably take offline. Uh, they're a little bit more long-winded and, and inquiries into the products themselves. Um, anything else? We, we have a few more minutes here. We can, we can touch on anything that was already presented or any other questions about you know, security or the, the product and services in general. Wait for longer than a minute. Yeah. Wait for longer than a minute. Or yeah. Like otherwise, just like I say, just like any questions, we just forever.
All right. Uh, so we, we have a couple of other questions coming in through various channels and, and we'll handle those uh, at, you know, one off. Um, since we have a few extra minutes, anyone that wants to hang around, um, Scott is going to uh, run through a quick demo of the management of, of the product and, and how it's laid out. Uh, it'll be pretty brief. I mean, there, there's a lot to show. So um, by all means, this isn't, you know, a, a, a full, a full on, um, you know, demo that we would normally do, but it, at least give you some idea of what it looks like. So, all right, guys, you know, just talking, you know, what Sophos Central is all about, central.sophos.com. You know, about five or six years ago, we kind of saw this uh, need in the industry to start translating you know, those traditional on-prem products into a fully cloud hosted model. You know, a couple of different reasons behind that. Well, as I'll show you here real quick, good example would be, pull up my release notes here, what's new Sofo Central. Because of that idea, being able to provide a fully hosted platform, any new bells and whistles that we're spinning up out there and new feature sets, we're very, very, it's very easy to deploy that directly to you. So being a hosted model, we build it, you get it as long as you're licensed for it. So what that solves is you're no longer having to be responsible for continuing to maintain another component inside of your ecosystem, which is, I can't stress enough how highly important that is. Historically, being in this industry, whenever there were incidents in that old school way of doing things, you know, it wasn't really that virus definitions or whatever weren't necessarily not being updated. It was that feature sets that coulda, shoulda, woulda mitigated or minimized or just prevented a problem in the first place just simply weren't there because your AV consoles and whatever, they just weren't hitting those maintenance windows that they had to. Now they are. You know, anytime there's a new feature set, it's deployed dynamically. Our endpoint also sees that, hey, you know, there's a new version of me out there. I'm going to go ahead and update myself as well. So it's one less thing that you're having to be concerned about from an operational perspective, you know, behind the curtain that you want to keep updated, especially in today's landscape. You guys hear about it as much as I do as a security guy. It's just a really big deal. We were all just kind of gritting our teeth, wondering, you know, just how how secure we are and anything that we need to be doing to, you know, just further lock up our security posture. This is our way of helping you do that. You don't have to babysit this back end. So what that translates into when I log into Sofo Central, I have everything that's basically available in my product landscape to me. So anything that I've subscribed to here, whether it's an endpoint protection or our specific server protection, which has its own endpoint, servers are their own threat landscape. You know, deploying a traditional workstation endpoint to a server really isn't best practice anymore. They have their own very specific needs and that's built into that endpoint. Full MDM, as we were starting to discuss, this is a mobile product that deploys not only to just, you know, Android and iOS from that perspective, but you know, very much out to Mac OS and Windows 10. So now you can start to target, you know, more of that BYOD and build out policies that, you know, are allowing people to bring their personal MacBook Airs to work or whatever, and you know, get access to, you know, their email. They own it, so you can't really control it, but yet you need to be able to deploy maybe some foundational security posture components, you know, lock screen password, minimal, minimal passwords, other things that you may want to ensure takes that endpoint up to, you know, a little bit more of your corporate own standard. Everyone has to kind of determine what makes the most amount of sense for them in that regard. We're going to provide you just a bunch of different ways to help you solve that problem. Again, babysat under one dashboard. Nobody else needs another dashboard to have to deal with. So, Encryption, what this is, very, very popular little add-on. Um, everyone knows what BitLocker is. BitLocker is not overly complicated to deploy. It's just more cumbersome to babysit on the back end. We pull all of that BitLocker management directly 
into the product as well. So now it's very, very easy to see what's encrypted out there, what's not, how do we, you know, sh show from an auditing perspective that, you know, this lost asset, you know, really was encrypted and it's not just a quote unquote recovery tree written down in an Excel spreadsheet somewhere. Very, very easy add on. Lots of different toys in here. So, um, Threat Analysis Center, we started to talk a little bit about that whole EDR componentry. So this is what that starts to translate into. So I hit up my, th my Threat Intel Center here, anything that is detonating inside my ecosystem, events that may happen, it's very, very easy to click on this and now be able to gather significantly more intel into what this looked like and then to start to dig deeper into you know, anything that I may care about to better help lock up my security posture. You know, what user on what device ran what? Was it an executable? Was it off at a local file share? Was it a website? Whatever. And now that's giving you more information on what you can do with it. Where did it go? Maybe I want to isolate this device administratively while I'm doing some investigation here. Or maybe I want to deploy this feature in a policy directly that I'm pushing out to my endpoints that's dynamically going to do that. So endpoint protection here, policies, threat protection, along with peripheral control, app control, web control, a lot of different feature sets in here that people aren't aware that, you know, we give them the ability to do. But looking at our base threat protection policy here, over in settings, you can see all the way at the bottom here, I want to put my devices directly into an isolated state in the event that they go into a red health for whatever reason. This is always happening on a Sunday afternoon. I always say, you know, I mean, this stuff happens on a Sunday afternoon when you're watching the game, when you're drinking your fourth beer. You know, it's Monday morning when you come in and everything just went sideways. We see this every week. It's gotten to the point where I don't look forward to Mondays for a new reason because I see so much of this stuff happening off hours. It's, it's just the reality of today's landscape. You guys need better tools to help solve those problems. You need to make sure that you're not, something's not sitting there waiting for you to authorize or click on something, whatever. This stuff needs to do a better job of solving its own problems for you. That's the whole idea behind the platform. And guys, we can dig in really deep, and I'd be happy to go over this with the integrated IT team and you guys anytime you want. Anybody who wants to dig in a little deeper, you know, we are here for you anytime. But there's a, there's a lot in here. You know, if this is at all interest of you, there's just a ton that Sophos has to, to offer anymore. Excellent. Thanks, Scott. Uh, there, there is one more question I think we can fit in here. We got uh, three or four more minutes before we end. Um, a device gets isolated. Uh, will it push app to another VM or is it a manual change? Will it push? Will it push app to another VM or is manual change? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, digging into it a little bit, so if a device is pushed into an isolation state, what's happening there is that investigation is starting and a cleanup process is initiated. If we have the ability to clean it up, then we're going to solve that problem and then we're going to take it back out of an isolated state. So that network connectivity is restored, which is always our goal. If for whatever reason we're unable to, you certainly want to keep that asset in an isolated state. And, you know, we're of course going to alert you, you know, the, what that, you know, what's happened and, you know, what you may need to be aware of, whatever. But, you know, our goal is to, to restore network connectivity if we can. And that whole idea digs fairly deep from an isolation perspective. Our firewalls also tie themselves in from a threat isolation perspective. So one big differentiator with us in the industry, as we were starting to dig into a little bit the beginning of our presentation, is the firewalls and the endpoint very much operate as a team. So what this means, central synchronization here, I can easily take my XG firewalls and I can connect them to Sophos Central. So I can start to share this intel that my endpoints are aware of 
very, very easily. And I can link my management of my XG firewalls into Central as well. Again, that whole simplification of dashboards. What this translates into is this. So now, immediately, I'm aware of the security status of my endpoints. Any at-risk endpoints, anything that may happen, I can institute lateral movement prevention at a layer three perspective as well, because now I'm introducing that firewall into the equation. So I can build that idea directly into my policies where I can say, hey, you know, if something, if my heart beats red or you're not, my client's not installed, don't allow network access. So those are just no more complicated than a couple of check boxes to make all of that possible. If you're not running our client, you're not traversing whatever. If your endpoint's not in a green or a yellow state, your choice, you're not going anywhere. Now, deeper diving into that relationship, that differentiator, you're gonna see we have all these allowed app categories up here, these cloud applications. In order to get this Intel, I haven't done a thing with the policy. I haven't had to SSL decrypt, tear anything apart, put anything back together in order to have this visibility. Fundamentally, because my endpoint is already aware of what I'm running, it's feeding that data up into Central to tell my firewall all about it. So instantaneously, under applications here, I see everything. I know everything that's running on my endpoints, and now I can take action against it, my cloud applications. That's awesome. So. Awesome. Uh, great job, Scott. Um, very informative. I, I know that that was a lot of uh, information to cover. It was meant to be a 10,000 foot view. Um, there's a lot more to see, a lot more to do. Uh, we can get you guys hands on as needed. So by all means, reach out to us. You can reply to the invite that you got, um, the info at, or you can contact us directly. Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we, we had a great time. I, I learned something every time I go through one of these as well. So Hopefully everyone else picked up some, some valuable information and um, thanks again.